Siget was a long time coming for me. The northern Romanian border town was nearly half Jewish when my great-grandmother, Bertha Lax, would have lived there in the last years of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. To know what happened next in Siget, you need only read Eli Wiesel's Night. I didn't expect to find anything tangible to touch or to hold on to. I certainly wasn't on the lookout for the spirits of my ancestors waiting to welcome me with open arms like a musical Pixar movie. I just wanted to be in Siget. And that's precisely what I got to do. Driving around the Maramuresh countryside, it struck me that I was probably seeing more of this place than my great-grandmother ever did. The stocky roadside village homes made of wood, and the rolling foothills of nearby Maramuresh Mountains Natural Park teasing my itchy feet in the distance. Come, hike me, you know you want to. What my great-grandmother would have gotten to see is a Siget with storefront signs in Yiddish, her native language. Siget is very much still there with its core of rainbow-colored buildings that survived the war and the communist dictatorship to follow, but knowing what once was makes the absence of Jewish life all the more noticeable. I needed the eye of Alina Marinchan to spot the former synagogues, Stars of David etched into cobblestones, and to see the market alleys where gossip was passed around like memes are today. Alina is the curator of the Elie Wiesel Memorial House, where the Nobel Peace Laureate's remarkable life is memorialized in his childhood home. It's also where I was invited to whip up some kasha varnishkas for a Jewish culinary workshop alongside plates of honey cake, chopped liver, cholent, and other classics of Ashkenazi cuisine. But my visit wasn't all heritage all the time. Being me, I couldn't not dip into the foothills of the Carpathian Mountains. I mean, look at them. It's like hanging a carrot in front of a donkey. Or, you know, a penis-shaped rocket in front of a billionaire. thinking to myself, eh, this concern about the dogs, probably overblown. I mean, what are the odds? Then, of course, run right into a flock of sheep and good three big dogs coming at me, barking. Coming at me, I don't mean sprinting and life flashing before my eyes kind of deal, but, you know, enough that I turned around. So after waiting for a bit, trying to get my, you know, Part out of my throat, uh, get my shorts to dry, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, waited for a while and it seemed like maybe the farmer moved the sheep off the path so I could pass. So the runs turned into more of a hike now because I'm trying to be slow and pay attention. Though I am still going up anyway, so that's fine. I just hope I live to edit this together myself instead of Vena Hatzog in a documentary after finding my GoPro and some dog crap. Wish me luck. I had one last thing I wanted to do in Siget, and that was to leave Siget and walk over the Titsa River into Solotvina, Ukraine, where it seems my great-grandmother's father, Leopold, a shoemaker, came from. Alina again shows me the signs of Jewish life I would have otherwise missed, like the synagogues of yesteryear. 
It's hard not to get swept up into the nostalgia and imagine the intimacy of thriving shtetl life with its Yiddish bouncing across the market stalls, into the cheder, and back home where the family is waiting. A place where Shalom Aleichem said no Jew would go hungry on the Sabbath. After a sizzling pot of roasted veggies, we continued down to Tietshiv, where my research says my great-grandmother's mother, Florence, was from. Once again, the only marker of Jewish life is an empty synagogue that Google Maps says is a gym now. For what it's worth, I didn't see anyone coming in or out, so average Shlomo's gym might not exist anymore. After a slice of cake, we headed back to Solotvina to stop by the Jewish cemetery. Of course, I wondered what ancestors, if any, were buried here, and if so, the proper way to honor them. Lacking the right amount of divine inspiration, I simply stood quietly and embraced the silence of rural Ukraine. Because whether or not these were direct ancestors, I knew that as Ashkenazi Jews, we are all related. <laughs>